Well, hello there, sixth graders. Happy Monday to you. I hope that you had a wonderful Easter weekend. We're going to go ahead and jump in today with our devotional reading. Let me grab that book. Here it is. Thank you to those of you, by the way, who sent in pictures of the mosaics that you created. They are absolutely beautiful. I think that's such a fun project to do. Okay, here is today's devotional reading. When I give you no special guidance, stay where you are. Concentrate on doing your everyday tasks in awareness of my presence with you. The joy of my presence will shine on you as you do everything for me. Thus, you invite me into every aspect of your life. Through collaborating with me in all things, you allow my life to merge with yours. This is the secret not only of joyful living, but also of victorious living. I designed you to depend on me moment by moment, recognizing that apart from me, you can do nothing. Be thankful for quiet days when nothing special seems to be happening. Instead of being bored by the lack of action, use times of routine to seek my face. Although this is an invisible transaction, it speaks volumes in the spiritual realms. Moreover, you are richly blessed when you walk trustingly with me through the routines of your day. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you um, for the victory that we have in Jesus. We thank you that he is our Lord and our Savior. We thank you that you are our provider and our Father. We thank you for your Spirit who guides us, who leads us, who comforts us. Lord, I pray that we will willingly trust you today. When times are tough, that we will lean into you for strength and for guidance. Um, help us to know that our identity, our worth, our value is found in Christ alone. Lord, we thank you for who you are and for all that you've done. And it's through Jesus we pray. Amen. So we're going to jump in today um, talking more about the daily lives of the ancient Romans. You've done a little bit of reading about some of these aspects of culture, but today we're really going to dive into the typical Roman clothing, typical Roman food, and then a floor plan of a typical Roman home. So I'm going to go ahead and click share screen. And hopefully this will be popping up in just a moment. Okay, so just some reminders. Um, remember that the Roman Empire experienced great growth, wealth, and trade in its early to middle phases. Um, there was quite a difference between the different classes of people, and we've talked about that, and we've talked about those in government, um, specifically senators. We've talked about the patricians. Um, from the upper class, the plebeians, um, more of the common people, um, your merchants, your workers, your farmers, and then we've talked about the slaves as well. Um, the five good emperors, I don't know that I've touched on this yet, um, but you can see their names there. Those were the five who ruled during the Pax Romana, um, during that 200-year period of peace in Rome. Um, let's see, we've already talked about entertainment quite a bit. We've talked about the Colosseum, um, how that was um, an amphitheater used for entertainment. We've talked about the expansion of the Roman Empire, how it continued to grow and stretch out over um, the known world at that time around the Mediterranean Sea. Um, daily life, let's look at this one. Every household was run by the oldest adult male. Um, he was known as the potter, P-A-T-E-R, familius, or basically the father of the family. Um, women in the household, they were in charge of all of the domestic duties, anything related to running the household. Um, there was a large gap 
between the rich and the poor. The poor lived in shabby houses, actually within Rome itself, um, in these tiny little apartments. Um, so they lived in shabby places, the poor did, that really could collapse or burn at any moment. Um, fires were very, very common within the insulae, the apartment buildings in Rome. Um, we'll get more to a typical Roman home in a minute. I want to show you first um, a slide that will probably be familiar to you. This is one that I used earlier to describe um, the patricians there on the left and the plebeians there on the right, but I want to focus specifically on their clothing. Um, so let's start with the plebeians on the right. You'll see that the man is dressed in a tunic, which is cinched at the waist. Um, the plebeian female, she has a tunic as well. It goes down to her ankles. That would have been um, the modest form of dress for a female plebeian. So she has a, just a longer tunic that's cinched at the waist. And then she also has something um, called a pala that is on top, almost like a shawl that's draped over her um, for added warmth and probably for added modesty as well. And of course, they're wearing sandals. Um, if we now turn our attention to the patricians, we see that the man is wearing um, a white tunic is the base of his clothing. But then on top of that, he has what's called a toga. Um, togas were originally only to be worn by male citizens within Rome. As time passed, um, non-citizens began to wear them too. But you'll notice that his has a purple lining, almost like a purple drape. Um, on the edge of his toga, and that would symbolize his status. Um, that would mean that he was a government official. And then um, his wife next to him, she is wearing um, something that looks a lot fancier than the plebeian woman is wearing. Um, she is wearing a stola, S-T-O-L-A. Um, that is a dress. And you can tell that it's cinched in a couple of places there. And she has a pala, but a much fancier pala or shawl covering her. Um, she also has jewelry, which shows her wealth and status. And then I want you to notice that most Roman women, they wore their hair up each day. Um, they would pin it up. Um, they would only have their hair down and, and long when they were at home in the evenings when they didn't have company with them. So I wanted to show that to you. Um, I have this next slide titled Eat Like a Roman, um, just to show you some of the things that were typical Roman foods, olives for sure, um, fruit such as pears and figs. Figs were very important to the Roman diet. Um, garlic, onion, leeks, those were super important as well. Bread, extremely important. Really, in pretty much every civilization, bread is an essential part of the diet. And then as far as the proteins go, lots of fish, because remember, Italy sticks out into um, the Mediterranean Sea, so lots of opportunities um, to catch fish, oysters, and even snails. Yeah, I don't like that one. Um, so their diets were um, different than probably what we typically eat as Americans. Um, they didn't have fast food the way that we do. Um, their proteins were different, more fish-based than um, beef or chicken-based, which we probably are. Um, but lots of fruit, lots of vegetables, and definitely olives, um, which could be pressed down into olive oil as well. So this is actually called kind of a Mediterranean diet. Um, I want to show you, last slide for today, a typical Roman home. Now, again, this really depends on whether you're a plebeian 
or whether you are a patrician. The food actually depends on that too. Um, the poor, they didn't get to have all of the fruits and the vegetables and the fish. Um, they hoped to get bread each day. Um, so what I just showed you about the food, typical food that would be for patricians, not the plebeians, and certainly not the slaves. Um, but what I want to show you here is a typical Roman home. Um, this would be for someone in the patrician class. This is known as a domus, D-O-M-U-S, and that's actually where we get our English words domestic and domicile from, which refer to a home. So I want you to notice here um, a few different things. So there's a courtyard or what they would call an atrium um, that is kind of there in the middle and that would be open air. And they had a really cool um, fountain pool for water that they would have either in their atrium or this shows um, it a little bit further into the home, um, but they would have a pool there for rainwater. And so the roof line would be sloped so that when it rains, the water would be dropped down right into that little pool there. I'll show you with my cursor, although I know sometimes the cursor lags, so I'll just leave it right there for a moment. Um, the atrium was where the Roman families, they entertained their guests. Um, as I mentioned, rainwater poured into a pool and it was stored for drinking or for washing. I want you to notice that the kitchen is outside. Um, remember, they would have cooked with open flames and they don't want their kitchen in the middle of their home in case something catches fire and then all of a sudden their home is burnt to the ground. So their kitchen would be outside the home so that if a fire started, they could put it out before it completely destroyed the rest of the house. Um, this domus includes a garden, which looks lovely. It even includes um, a reading room. And then I want you to notice um, the statue of the great grandfather. Um, family lineage, um, heritage was extremely important to the Romans, and so their ancestors would always be um, recognized and honored and revered. And then I want you to notice um, the father of the family sits here, right there in the middle of all the action, so that he can see everyone and everything because he was responsible ultimately for everyone and everything. So the Roman family, it would of course include the pater familius, the father, the dad, the oldest male in the family, but it would include his wife, it would include their children, um, it would include their servants and their servants' families, their slaves, and perhaps even the family members of slaves. So the pater familius, um, the man in charge, um, he really was tasked with taking care of all of those people that I just described. Um, we do have some bedrooms here. Um, there are no walls being shown so that you can actually see into um, the house, but of course the different bedrooms did have walls. Um, they had a dining area, and it's really interesting, in the Roman world at this time, you actually um, ate kind of lying down on your side, propped up with one elbow. You reclined at the table. Um, the Gospels um, that were written during this time period, they talked about Jesus and his disciples reclining at the table. They did not sit on a chair at a table. Um, they reclined, they lie down next to the table. Um, they called the room in which they had their dinner parties the triclinium. It basically means three couch place because the room had three couches. Um, dinner guests ate while they were lying on their sides, as I said. So that is just a brief look at um, some of the daily aspects of Roman life, 
clothing, homes, food. And so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you are going to have just two or three questions uploaded on Google Classroom that I want you to answer after you finish watching this video. And then if you have any questions, I'll talk to you at the Q&A later today. I do hope you have a wonderful day and I'm praying for you. Love you. Miss you a bunch. Bye guys.